Hi, my name's Derek, and you're watching the Bayside Games dev blog for uh, Robots Can't Jump. Uh, we're busy constructing a particle manager system, and we've already defined the particle manager, particle container, and particle flask. So now we're fleshing out the particle container and carrying on from, from where we left off. So we were just adding in a whole bunch of little variables that control the way the particle system looks when it's initially created. Um, these are the uh, spawn radius, lifetime, and particle system's central position. So we're just going to pop these into the um, initializer list. These variables are all constants, as you can see here. That's why we have to construct them here. And it's actually a good system because it forces us to think about how they're used. And, you know, do we have too many arguments here? We're getting pretty close to having too many arguments, in my opinion. Um, let's just have another look. I think we've actually left one out, which is the position. Let's just check that. Yeah, we didn't set that. Okay, so the position is the very first variable. We'll just make some space for it. Okay, now the user can uh, initially, when the system is created, set a position. Um, and the, after that, they can call set position to update it. If, like if you attach this particle system to a rocket, for instance, that'd be a great way to update its position once a frame. Otherwise, it would sort of be left behind and it would look pretty awful. So that's all good. Um, these are being set up, that's fine. Now these can start feeding into our update and render. The very first thing we wanna do in our update is to actually see sort of um, what we need to do, um, what's the current state of our list of particles, which one of them needs to be removed and so on. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is actually look through the list and figure out how we're gonna find out when particles need to be added and removed. Um, so when I think about that a little bit, um, I know immediately I'm going to need some sort of loop. So um, because we're just using an array, a list of particles in our array, and we have a max number of particles, we can quite easily go through the list. Um, so we also have this other variable. Oops, we also have this other variable called mnum particles, which is the number of particles currently active. So we're going to use that variable to start with. So we're going to create a loop. I'm going to loop through um, the number of active particles. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to collect particles that need to be updated. We are also going to um, have a closer look and think a little bit more about how these particles are collected. So the obvious first thing to do is to loop through all the particles and you know flag some for deletion. But that may not be the most efficient way of doing it. Um, what I think might be a better solution would be to have a slightly different loop structure. But we'll start with this one and we'll sort of just use that. Um, the render is much easier because we don't have to uh, change the contents of our list of particles. So that's much simpler. We, in here, we'll just add each particle to the streams. And we'll have to think about our streams as well. So let's have a look here. We have the number of particles. Um, so every particle object, if you recall correctly, has a position and a size. These are just things we sort of randomly added. So this is the position and world space of a particular particle, not the particle system. The size of the particle and so on. We're going to have to make a decision later on whether that's an absolute position or a position relative to the origin of our system. Um, my feeling would be to go for an absolute position. But anyway, that's fine. So now that these variables are private, we can't actually do very much with them. But luckily, the particle container is a friend, so we can just use that to actually set up these these guys. And one important thing we don't have in here right now is the lifetime. So let's go back to the particle container. So a particle has an initial lifetime in seconds. So we're going to copy that over. But this is going to be dynamic lifetime. It's going to sort of tick down. So this is the number of seconds this particle has left to live. So every time we call update on this particle, we're going to decrement this until it goes underneath zero, less than zero, and we know then to collect the particle and re recycle it, it's dead. Uh, we can reuse its slot in the particle array. That's very, very easy to implement. I'll show you how to do it. I'm just going to make these into member variables because I like to use the little M syntax just to make it easier for myself. Okay, 
So if we go back to the container, now that each particle has its own lifetime, uh, we need to think a little bit more about how they're going to be created. So as a test, let's just leave that aside for a moment. As a test, let's just uh, statically create a couple of particles, no fancy lifetime management quite yet. And we'll do that in the constructor. So at this point, the number of particles is zero, which is easy enough. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to have a little mini function called add particle, just private. Nobody else is going to call it outside this class. And we'll flesh it out a little bit. For now, it's not going to do much. Um, for our current particle, so we have our list, we have our array of particles, and the current particle. And now you look, you can see uh, which of the little members each of these particles has. So initially, we're just going to do something really simple. We're going to set the position of each of these particles to be the position of the system. So the system has its own central position, which is mpos, the position of the center. So let's just check that the types are correct. Yep, that's fine. And we're also going to assign a size. For now, we're just going to set it to be a really, really small. Our coordinate system uses really small sizes. So 0.01 is actually fairly big. Um, it's probably bigger than the player character. And last but not least, we're going to assign a lifetime. That's also in seconds. So we'll give each particle one five seconds to live, let's say. Just very arbitrarily, we're going to increment the number of particles. And now immediately I've seen a flaw in this code. Um, if we call add particle too many times, we're actually going to overflow the bounds of our array. This bracket operator that C has, there is no bounds checking. So you could potentially stomp on anything in memory. Uh, you'll most likely get a bus error on the iPhone. That's bad. So we need to check before we actually use it that it's not too large. So we're actually going to... Um, for this case, I think, you know, add particles is probably going to be called thousands of times a second. It doesn't make a lot of sense to put things like assertions in here. So let's have a branch and let's say if num particles is smaller than the maximum number of particles, then we can do stuff with it. But we've actually got a mistake here. It shouldn't be smaller than the maximum because we can still increment it and clobber stuff. It should be smaller than the maximum minus one. Just to be very clear and we'll put, yeah, um, don't overflow the bounds of... Uh, all right, so that's where max particles is used this maximum you so this is easy enough It'll let us add particles very simply and we, what we're going to do in our constructor just as a as a starting point We're going to call it a few times In fact, we're only going to call it once the first time and then we'll start Specializing it and putting in lifetimes and stuff and random variations So even if we did call it right now you, all the particles would just sit on top of each other and be kind of no point to it All right, so now we have a starting point for our update loop So let's uncomment that and for each active particle in here, we'll do things like update lifetime, etc. We're not going to move the particles or anything like that yet, so let's just leave that. Last but not least, we need a render function. And what we need to do now is start thinking about where are these streams, how am I going to submit these particles to the GPU. So this is where things get a little bit interesting. We're going to require several streams, so um, let's start declaring these streams. Um, Streams are just blocks of memory which are copied into the GPU and uh, they're typically just very simple arrays of vertices or floating point numbers It's the most common thing that you would send. In fact, I don't think there really is any other type of stream For our example um, we, we can actually cheat a little bit just to start out with and we can use um, what I call templated data So a good example of this is the actual vertices that we use to define the triangles that form our particles so what we can do is just as a sort of a cheat um, is to copy these vertices into a part of our uh, stream and then just sort of change their values slightly depending on what we need um, it gives us a good sort of starting point anyway for our template uh, we also need to define areas of memory to place these streams in so we'll start by doing that let's create these areas of memory first of all so Streams are used to send our primitives to the GPU. So the first stream we need is one for vectors. So this uses the vector, the short vector type. 
SVEC3. Now, if you look at this type, it uses int16s for its XYZ. So the reason for this is because it's all sort of done in a kind of model space. And typically in model space, you're not going to have large coordinates. Uh, the coordinates going to be quite small. Um, so that's a pretty big memory saving for us because it's half the size of a full-size float or uh, in 32. So we're using fixed point here, but it's, it's roughly equivalent. So we're going to need a bunch of these objects. So we're going to use a pointer and we're actually going to allocate an array of them later on. These are going to be our vertices. So we're going to call them um, just M vertices. So it doesn't have to be fancy. So these are the stream of vertices in model space sent to the GPU. Now I should just emphasize that these vertices using the short vector type are actually relative to our view space origin. Um, we'll discuss that shortly a little bit later, but that's why we can use such a small data type to represent them. Okay, so we have vertices, but you're not gonna see a lot without a few other things. Um, the most important thing we need to send is also a list of colors. So colors are just defined as CIW color. And if you go and have a closer look at CIW color, you'll notice that it's really just a bunch of RGB values stored as bytes. So that's easy enough to understand. So now that we have a few of these, I think we should actually give them a slightly better name. We'll start every name that used for a GPU stream with M stream. So these colors are going to be matched up to the vertices. We're also going to need a stream of indices and the indices are just stored as UN16s. So this is this one isn't really a stream per se, but we can just call it a stream for uh, just to be consistent with the others. So we'll just put quotes around there to warn people. It's, it's not really a stream. This is actually only ever used by the CPU. It gets packaged up and sent to the GPU internally by IWGX. Okay, so we've got our streams. So one important thing to note about these streams is that because the number of our maximum number of our particles, I should say, is constant, it's fixed, these guys can be fixed too. And in fact, we only want to ever allocate them once for the lifetime of this container with the uh, worst case sort of size. So let's do that. Okay. Now what we do is uh, we're just going to copy these guys. And they are the, just come up to M num particles. Okay, so this should be easy enough to do. Um, so stream vertices. Um, we actually have to review this code. Um, we actually want these to come after the max number of particles. Because uh, this max number of particles needs to be initialized first before we can allocate these guys. So let's go back. Once again, it's just an order of allocation, order of initialization type of thing. So we can just create a bunch of CIWS vec3s. And although um, although this um, this operation looks like it will be expensive or you know be really processor intensive, it's not. It actually basically resolves down to a single malloc lower down, um, as well all the following ones that we do, which is pretty efficient. I mean. It's almost the most efficient thing that you can do in terms of allocation. The only thing that's more efficient would be a stack allocation. Okay. So they, these are all done very similarly. And this number that I'm using to initialize the size of these arrays may not be quite exactly right. But, you know, it's the, the general thing. The general pattern will be similar. So we'll have a quick look at that momentarily. Okay, so for instance, the number of indices may not be quite right. And it's not really happy with this. Ah, yes, that's right. The This one needs to be a pointer too. And that's right. Okay, so in the next session, we're just going to uh, initialize these slightly differently because they're not quite the right size yet. We'll get there and then we'll have some streams. So thanks for watching.